Inside this video right here, I'm gonna go through two main lessons that you need to know if you're getting ready for your NREMT exam for EMR. Here we go. Hey everyone, Evan the Paramedic Coach. I'm so excited to deliver this content for you. We got two lessons here, EMR and REMT. Hit like, hit subscribe, here we go. I wanna talk about CPR first. So cardiac arrest, the big thing you have to understand here is this. We get the best results from cardiac arrest when we have early defib, which is our AED, and we have early compressions. Remember, my friends, that we're talking about defib, that is going to restart the heart because the patient's in a lethal rhythm. When we do chest compressions, well, what, what are we doing? We are the patient's pumping heart with our hands. Why are we doing ventilations? So we can continue the oxygen carbon dioxide process for the patients or breathing for the patient. That's what we do in cardiac arrest. And this is the most essential elements. So we hope, you know, we hope no one goes into cardiac arrest, but if they do, we hope it's someone trained CPRs nearby. They know what high quality CPR is. Right here, we're gonna talk about it. And we hope it's an AED right nearby, right there. That's the best scenario. So here is high quality CPR. I'm gonna read these off first. The compression rate, 100 to 120 in minutes. Compression depth, it's gonna be at least two inches in adults. For children and pediatrics, we're looking at chest dimensions, at least one third, okay? No excessive ventilation. That should remind you that the focus in the science is based upon great compressions and getting early defib. Now here, one that's not talked about as much we need proper hand placement. So on the screen right here, I'm gonna show you the proper hand placement. Here it is right here, you can see it. This is so, so important, okay? Now right here are the final pieces. Remember your ventilation rate is gonna be one breath every five, six seconds. Okay, that's key, it's gonna be on there, no doubt about it. You're gonna be doing 30 to two, so 30 compressions, two breaths. That's gonna be for everybody. That's gonna be for the adult one and two rescuer, and it's gonna be for the one rescuer pediatric, so like child infants, but, uh, hang on, except two rescuer child infant, that is 15 to two. So if you can remember in your mind, okay, both adults, one and two rescuer are 30 to two. Now, whoop. Child and infant, that's different. One rescuer, 30. It's 15 two for two rescuer. Here are the big pearls of CPR. Let's talk about when to use oxygen. Let's talk about nasal cannula. Let's talk about now our breathers. Let's talk about BVMs. Here we go. Hey, great work. You made it to the lesson number two. Now here it is. You have to understand these oxygen devices. This is one of the main culprits of not getting through an REMT exam. Now, there's three main levels here, if you will. Nasal cannula oxygen, non-rebreather mask oxygen, and then BVM, bag valve mask oxygen, okay? Let's break these down. I have a lot on the board here to go over, but I'm just gonna talk here for a bit and then we'll go back to the board. Now, with nasal cannula, I want you to think about more milder symptoms. Okay, let's say a patient, their respiratory rate is okay. Let's say they're able to speak in almost full sentence, but you notice that their O2 sat is below 94%. That would be a good patient for a nasal cannula. More milder symptoms. They would not be tripoding with an SpO2 of 88% and not able to speak to you. That would be more of a non-rebreather type of situation, okay? 
So let's look at the difference between these two first. Nasal cannula. So they need oxygen because they're below 94%. Hey, remember, normal SpO2, pulse oximetry, normal oxygen levels we're looking for, 94% to 99%, okay? No one really is 100%, okay? Unless they're very, very, very young children, okay? Now, nasal cannula, more mild symptoms. So if we're on exam and we hear buzzwords like tripoding, accessory muscle use, not speaking in full sentences, right? Severe, right? Or we're going to talk about later, weak. Okay, that's for the next one. We want to say, okay, this is not nasal cannula. This sounds too severe. It's got to be non or breather. Okay, so let's go over non or breather. Tripoding, less talking, accessory muscle use at play, low O2 sat. This is your classic severe difficulty breathing. But here's the big thing. We have oxygenation versus oxygenation and ventilation. So the BVM is going to give you oxygen and we're going to ventilate you at the same time. The non breather means you can still breathe, but you do not have enough oxygen. You need a lot of it. Nasal cannula is you need a little bit more oxygen than you need. Okay. Now here's BVM. If you hear they have weak respirations or sluggish respirations or they're unresponsive or semi-responsive, they can't control their own airway, for example, they're not ventilating on their own, this, the BVM, remember this, my friends, is a respiratory rate issue primary and they cannot protect their own airway primary. It's a ventilation issue more than an oxygenation issue. This is oxygenation land over here. So we, we can literally just, we go like this. I'm gonna do this for you. We cross it. This is oxygenation, this is ventilation. Does that make sense? That's what we have to look at with this patient. So you can see here, bag valve mass. Can't protect their own airway. Isn't ventilating on their own. It's a respiratory rate issue. It's either too low, under 12 for an adult, or it's way, like let's say over, it would, be, it would be over 20. But in reality, it'd be really high, like 28, 30, 32. It's extremely high. Or classic unresponsive. Like we just talked about CPR. You might use a BVM in, in, a ventil in ventilating your patient, right? Okay. Now, what's this down here? This is a surefire way for you to not only communicate about your patients, which this was actually designed for at first. Shout out to John Belinsky, who's a PA, that gave me this mnemonic here. It's called the Pirate Owl Mnemonic. So you hear R, like a pirate, and then owl. Okay, that's the mnemonic. Now, this mnemonic, what it does, the R, R, owl, what it does is it can relay, if you're reading a test question, or you see a patient out in the field, how sick they are, and which one of these they get. Let me give you an example. Let's say our respiratory rate was 20. Our O2 sat is at 93%. Our words per cent is about three to four. In the labored breathing, do we see any signs of tripoding or accessory muscle use? No. What does that patient get? Nasal cannula. Mild symptoms, but the 93, they need an increase. Okay. And they are complaining of shortness of breath. Now our breather. Let's do it now. What would the respiratory rate be? It'd probably be a little high. Let's say it's 24. The O2 sat, let's say in this case, 90%. Words per cent, one to two words per cent. Labored breathing, they have, they're found tripoding with accessory muscle use. That's your number breather. Now let's do the pirate owl again for bag valve mask. Here we go. Respiratory rate is six. O2 sat is 84%. Words per sense, they're not talking to you. They're unresponsive. Labored breathing, they're barely breathing at six and weak and sluggish. BVM, there it is. Hey, I hope this video gave you tremendous value as far as the EMR level going over these topics. As you know, right here on the screen you can see here is the content areas of the EMR EMT exam. If you are someone getting ready for this exam, this video was a small part portion 
of the content and need to know cold to pass the exam. So what I've done, I've created a video library over 400 videos, EMS medications, anatomy and physiology, going over NREMT prep for every single level. That includes EMR, EMT, advanced EMT, paramedic. If you are an EMR, I recommend you go into the EMT section and go through the entire anatomy and physiology section in the course immediately to get ready for this NREMT exam. My friends, hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you next time. If you go right now, I'll give you a lifetime access to the program. I'll see you there. Take care. Waste, don't waste any time. Don't, don't be hesitant and just do it because I know this program works. And I know it's, it got me to where I was, where it's been a year without school from EMT to, hey, I passed my test in 70 questions. Like, go for it. You could do it. Like, do not hesitate and don't waste any time. People that don't know you, they need to, they need this program. This program is not a, a choice. To me, this program is a have to. You take uh, uh, thousands and thousands of pages in the books and you just narrow it down and just make everything simple past the registry. So uh, it's, it's, it's great content, man. I promise you it's worth it. I took this with three weeks left to go in my class and I just, I'm not sure if I would have been able to pass my course or the NREMT first try without this course. The fact like when I was taking the, the national, and I would read the question and I, I would be like, whoa, Evan literally just went over this in the car. So it's, it really, it helps. I got to the point where I was just ready to spill all my knowledge onto this freaking test. So I'm like, you know what, man, just go ahead, go for it. Open it up, boom, congratulations, you passed. It was um, outside of having my children, man, it's probably the, like the happiest day of my life, bro, to be honest with you.